Hi, I'm Susan Dunlop and welcome to episode five of Coffee and Contemplation with Women. Uh, if you've not been here before, this is a series of podcasts where women from every decade of life are stepping forward to share their stories for the benefit of other women and also surprisingly for themselves as they go through some prep questions that I send through to them. Today, we are going to be chatting with my first bicenarian, that is a woman in her 20s. Uh, Katie was, uh, who is 28, from the Sunshine Coast in Queensland, uh, is joining us today. Welcome, Katie. Hi, thanks for having me. Hi, no worries. Uh, so Katie is a creative and the owner of a successful and thriving graphic design business called Rise and Raw Design, which I absolutely love the name of. You know, anyone, any woman would love to own a business that says Rise and Raw. Um, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> um, until this year, Katie had worked as a designer for leading brands and businesses, uh, but she decided to take a leap of faith and pivot her business and change the way she lived which in, in these times was probably a very good idea. And she is now actually enjoying her work, who she works with, and is making more of an impact by doing that. So we're going to go a little bit into that and you know, about the timeliness of Katie's decision as we talk today. But Katie shared too, as far as a bit of background, that she's come a long way in her personal development and she's learned the true meaning of getting to know herself. There have been pivotal points in her life that have forced her to change direction and learn to adapt. She has also learned to get, any, to get anywhere in life, you can't do it yourself, which is exactly what Katie has been working with me on for the last few weeks. Uh, I met Katie probably six weeks ago, and since then, Katie's been a private coaching client of mine in my Lead Your Business to Thrive program. Uh, so th this is also my first podcast with a client. Uh, so I really appreciate you giving me some time today, Katie, just to share your story. So we'll get going in Yeah, there. no troubles. Great, <laughs> great. So without further ado, uh, this is all about you today, Katie, not me. So what I was thinking, um, and you can say yes or no, but because it's this week in Australia and the amount of changes that have happened this week to so many businesses, you as a 28-year-old owner of a business, um, that you, uh, when I first met you, you had plans already in place where we were headed with it. What have you had to alter just in that last few weeks already that you know, other people might be interested and might help them with in their businesses as well? Yeah, definitely. So as we all know, these times have, are just absolutely crazy at the moment. Um, even though I am very, very lucky to be able to um, work from home because all I need is my laptop and a good internet connection, um, I was working from a co-working space, um, which I found was incredibly good for networking and making new friends and, um, yeah, getting referrals. So when all of this stuff has started happening going down I've had to start working from home again which means I'm not getting um, getting out and about and doing a little bit of um, networking that kind of thing and um, side note a lot of my work comes through referrals and networking events and of course because all the events have had to go on hold um, I haven't been able to do that so one of uh, started working from home again, which saves money on paying rent uh, at a space. Two, I've had to change a bit of my marketing um, <clears throat> processes, I guess. So instead of going to networking events and relying on referrals, I've had to start being a little bit more active on social media and um, just touching base with all clients through emails as well, which is really helpful. And um, yeah, today I've been brainstorming a lot about the types of services that I can provide um, people who have just been laid off work or um, need to move their business online so that they can still make an income. So I've been making these small little steps to um, try and pivot and change directions in my business to still make a bit of an income because at the moment it is very, very tough for everybody. But um, yeah, that's, that's a few of the things that I've been putting in place at the moment. Okay, because I was thinking, um, I, I was reading recently um, from Robin Sharma, and he was saying, uh, he's someone I follow who wrote the, the book, 
he was the, sorry, the monk who sold his Ferrari. And he was sort of saying that you really need to also be okay that it's not, uh, it's, sorry. Remember it's okay to not feel okay at the moment. So mm. whether that's in your life or business, how do you feel about what's going on in the world as someone from your age bracket? So for me, I haven't really seen anything, or well, I haven't seen anything like this. And I don't think a lot of us have. Um, we've obviously experienced such things as the Bali bombings and um, a, a few other big world events like shootings and all that kind of terrible thing. But um, yeah, I don't think we've, anyone's really seen anything like this happen before. So it's really hard to know how to react in how you should feel and how long you should feel that for as well. Um, so it's, it didn't hit me uh, very quickly at first. You know, I was kind of like, I think a little bit like everybody else. We're all like, oh, no, you know, it won't come to Australia. It's over in China. And then once we heard the first case, we're like, oh, okay, yeah, so it's here, but, you know, it's all good. And like mm. The Australian way of being like, nah, she'll be right, mate. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's really hit me in the last two weeks. Um, once uh, pubs, clubs and a lot of shops have been shut down. Um, I've been feeling very stressed because I work for myself. I, um, I don't know when my next client is going to come and say, hey, I need to do this. And a lot of my clients may not be able to have that money to spend with me either. So I have been feeling a little bit anxious, a bit stressed, which I think a lot of other people have been as well. But um, I think I'm getting to the point where I've felt that for long enough now. So now I'm, I've um, sat with it and, you know, you can't change what you can't change. So I'm now kind of trying to get past that and focus more on the positives and what I can do to uh, control my situation. Um, being very lucky to work for myself, I can control the outcome of how much I earn and, well, try to control um, how much I can earn and how much I can, um, you know, keep afloat and put food on the table. So, yeah, lots of mixed feelings. And being a part of our communities online as well has really helped sort through those emotions and kind of like connect with people who feel the same as well. Mm. Are you finding that the social media feeds are creating anxiety? Are you connected? To Most definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I've had to limit how much I look uh, on social media for sure because, um, you know, I don't mind having a bit of a scroll every now and again, seeing the beautiful things that people are posting and um, I, I follow a lot of creative accounts. Um, but, yeah, everything is about COVID-19 mm. and no matter if you you know they're putting trying to put a positive spin on it or not it still reminds you that it's there that it's, it's really hard to get away from yeah um have you put anything in place for because I know you you don't live at home you're obviously you're independent and have your own home mm. um, have you mm. um done anything towards preparing that if, if we do go into any extra levels of um lockdown or anything yeah, so um, myself and my partner, we probably about a month ago now, um, just started buying a little bit of extra food just to put into the cupboard just in case. Um, so we bought like just things like pasta, um, tin tuna and just those kinds of things um, without going crazy. But we just we know that, you know, if we do get locked down, it'd be good to just slowly build a little bit of a food bank just mm. in case. Um, so yeah, we have been taking a few little steps like that, but, um, nothing crazy because, you know, if the shelves are empty, like they have been, then people stress out more and it just kind of adds to the situation. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, I used to say, I think it's interesting just to get your perspective on it because I said, I know yeah, you had really, 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 really big plans for your business this year and, you know, something like this can undo any business. So Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And a lot of friends, uh, I have a lot of friends who own their own businesses too and all, all types of ages as well. Um, and I think what a lot of the younger generation um, are quite good at, I'm not saying that like the older generation aren't, but um, I think we're quite good at like changing direction and changing, we, you know, we're okay to change a few things to make it work, you know, like we're um, not too set 
um, in the way we do things um, type thing. But in business, you have to be like that anyway. So yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so maybe let's just talk. Um, I think today we're sort of talking about your profession a little bit more uh, because you are you know, the graphic designer and there's many people who will be listening to this. So they'd be interested to see a little bit about what graphic design is. So say in terms of your profession, what do you wish you had known before you started? Uh, so before I started graphic design, I really didn't know that I actually liked graphic design. Um, I kind of left school and I knew that I liked art and I knew that I liked the computer based side of it. Um, so I kind of just looked at courses at university and like, mm, okay, we'll try computer based graphic design. <laughs> um, and yeah, I really quickly fell in love with it and I've been doing it ever since. Um, and, uh, I can definitely recommend, um, doing a course like at uni or, um, something quite intense because you learn a lot of stuff. Um, like the design basics and how to use the programs, etc. Um, and for any people out there who are looking at doing something creative like graphic design or web design, that kind of thing, I definitely um, would recommend getting a job before working for yourself. <laughs> okay, all right. So, yeah, yeah so I, um, I luckily did get a job out of uni, which was really good, but I know a lot of um, other creatives out there who said that they wish they knew that that was um, a good step because a lot of um, people kind of tried to just go out on their own and then it didn't work and all that kind of thing. So I think um, one thing that a lot of people wish they had known is to get the experience in the industry, learn from your boss yeah. and then go out on your own. Yeah. Is it easy to get a role in graphic design? Is it, is it an industry in demand? Uh, I think there's definitely a growing um, appreciation for design. Um, it, there was a time not so long ago where, you know, illustrators and graphic designers and um, all that kind of, all the creative industry wasn't valued highly at all. But now um, I think everyone's slowly seen the, the value of it. So there are a lot more jobs going on and people having in-house designers. But on the Sunshine Coast, um, oh, when I left uni, there was a, probably three design studios that shut down within like a year or two from when oh, I left no. uni. <laughs> so on the sunny coast, there's not really too many jobs that I'm aware of that are going. Okay. Uh, and I think that's that's why a lot of people do work for themselves. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a, a good profession to be in because everyone needs a graphic designer, especially if you own your own business, like you need graphics for your website, you need your logo. Um, and it, because social media is such a big um, platform these days, people need um, a bit of art direction with that as well because it's all about the aesthetics. <laughs> yeah, and it seems to me like, I mean, as a coach, I get approached all the time by so many people that it'd be hard to actually work out how do you actually choose a good graphic designer off all those people that keep on suddenly liking all your posts and then decide to go to sell to you. Is there any recommendations mm. for people that, you know, you're going to go one way or the other way? What do they actually really need? Yeah, so I think I've actually written a blog post about this because it, like, I didn't realise it was such a a hard thing for people to do. But when I started looking for um, a virtual assistant, I didn't know where to start. So I'm like, well, if this is how I feel looking for someone to help me, then how would people find a good graphic designer? Um, so I think one big one is finding a graphic designer that has a similar, like a style that you really resonate with. So if they like doing bubbly pink, um, cute illustrations and that kind of thing, but you're more minimalistic black and white, then they're probably not going to produce you something that you really are looking for. Uh, so yeah. Look for a designer that's going to um, produce something of similar design to what they're already creating. Okay. Um, and then another one is <clears throat> uh, the price point as well. So depending on the experience of the designer, they could be um, just just 
to say for this um, point, they could be say $30 an hour as compared to another graphic designer, which is 120 an hour. Uh, it, it all depends on their experience. So it depends on your price budget as okay. well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then another one is, I think if you get along with them, because uh, if you don't get along with your graphic designer, like you, you're actually going to have a lot of to and froing with your phone calls or emails. So you need to be able to really connect with them so that they understand the brief that you're giving them and, and all that kind of thing. So mm. yeah, I think those three are a lot of the, the main points to keep an eye out for. Okay. And I imagine then that your successes when I first met you was around networking. That obviously is also all those things. Um, people can see that by actually, you know, meeting you face to face and talking versus all these people that keep approaching you online that you've got no idea who they are. So, mm. yeah, so that's, that's yeah. an advantage in itself, I'd say, what you're doing. Yeah, and that's why I um, get such so much success through uh, networking because mm. a lot of designers um, stereotypically like to um, sit behind a computer and they're a bit of an introvert. You know, they don't like getting out there, which I totally get. Yeah. Sometimes I just don't even want to leave the house. <laughs> but, um, yeah, getting face-to-face -face with people and getting them to make that connection personally really definitely helps. Okay. Well, that's just good. I just think that would be um, something of interest to, to people um, at this yeah. day and age when everyone's thinking about what the hell they're going to do as of this week. Um, so how about we move on to a little bit about you? Um, we'll just maybe in, we'll talk in relation to the creative side of you, but more the what you're doing in terms of this lockdown and knowing you might mm. have to stay at home. Can you share like what creative um, pursuits you're doing or adventures or ways you're going to play um, just to make life a little bit more fun so that while you're there, how are you going to make it work for you? Yeah, definitely. Um, so with all the um, COVID-19 and not, you, you know, they're trying to tell you to stay at home and everything. Um, I've really gotten back to basics with um, sitting down with a pen and paper or sitting down with canvas and paint and just being creative and kind of just going with the flow with that. Um, it may come to a surprise to some, but being a creative person, I actually don't make the time to do like that kind of basic creativity. I'm more so always on the computer, um, always doing other client work without really doing what I want to do, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've really made the effort to um, yeah get back to basics and do what I used to love doing as a kid. Okay. Um, they 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 do say that like you know what you used to do as a kid is you know what you should really get back to, and um, yeah, that's something that I really enjoyed. So yeah, that's something I've been trying to do um, in lockdown, I guess. <laughs> to well, so <laughs> kind of, of zone it's, out and well, it's easy and cheap isn't it like it's there yeah you, everyone's got a pen or a pencil to pick up to you know just have a little bit of a sketch or or have a bit of a play yeah yeah, yeah exactly and, and when you finish that little piece of, yeah when you finish that little piece of artwork then you can frame it and or put it on the wall or share it with your friends on socials like yeah. people are really getting into um everyone's creativity and everyone's got such a different style as well so it's a really good thing that you can share with other people and even create um challenges out of it like i know a few yeah. people who do um a logo a day challenge or draw a different flower like one day of um every day for a month type thing so you can oh, okay. do some really cool stuff with it yeah, yeah. well that's fun okay well, that's good because it's like when i met you only so many weeks ago you were thinking how are you going to bring fun and creativity back into your life and strangely yeah. it's now upon you and you're just doing it anyway <laughs> yeah kind of forced to do it hey because it's like if I don't work what else do I do at home <laughs> yeah that's right yeah is there anything else you're doing just in terms of that at home? yeah and I've also just gotten back into my um garden as well if you came to my house you'd see all of these various succulents because succulents are quite hard to kill so I try and keep <laughs> very low maintenance plants yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah uh, the other weekend I just spent a few hours repotting things and um, freshening all the soil up and giving them a little bit of growing juice so that was really good too because you just totally zone out and 
um, get right into it. So that's something that I really enjoy and oh, trying nice. to do a bit more of so they don't look so sad. <laughs> mm, a bit of vitamin D as well while you're doing it. It's pretty good. good yeah, answer. exactly. Yeah. Um, what piece of advice would you give a, tw- a 10-year-old you that you wish you'd been given by your mum? So I couldn't think of something for an exact 10 year old. So I can't remember what age I was when I did this, but um, when I was younger, <laughs> you want to laugh at this. The one thing that I really wish my mum had taught me how to do was to shave, how to shave properly. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. What yeah. Shave so, yeah. So, when I was um, younger and I was in, I think, close to high school and I asked my mum if I could start shaving my legs uh, because all the other girls were and um, I have quite dark hair. So it was, I was getting a little bit embarrassed by it because you could really see them. Um, and, you know, my mum would say, oh, once you start, you can't stop. That's right. <laughs> but I was just like, no, I want to do this. And yeah, I didn't realize you had to shave upwards. So I was just shaving oh. down. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that, that was the first time. And then the second time um, I was shaving my legs and then um, right on the side of your leg near your ankle, I scraped off a nice slice of skin right oh. off the side of my leg and it bled for hours. <laughs> I think all of us can recall our first bit of bloodshed when you, you otherwise do that or your shin, you know, too, too sharp. A yes. Oops. Oh, the shin. That's what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. And it bled for a long time. Oh, so know. that is, it's one thing that I just always wish my mum had taught me. <laughs> just kind of getting me the raise and it's like, there you go. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> I think most of us actually probably um, tried it without even telling our mums. So you at least asked. <laughs> Yeah, what a good girl I was. <laughs> well, I um, we, we're not going to actually have much longer. As, um, we're getting close to our half an hour. So I just thought maybe if you could just share of all the things you've done or accomplished in your life, Katie, what has given you the deepest sense of fulfilment so far? Uh, so it took me, uh, I looked at this question and I was thinking about it and um, I know that work and business isn't you know all 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 of life you know there's more things to to life than um just working but i have gained such a deep um feeling of accomplishment and um excitement and like all of those kinds of emotions from running my own business um because i'm giving myself um the I'm giving myself the opportunity to do what I want and when I want so I can work with who I want to work with. I can um, work on the projects that I really want to do and actually enjoy life as well. So it's, it's kind of like it is a job, but it filters through so many aspects of my life. And I think that's what has really given me um, my biggest accomplishment uh, feeling in my life. Um, yeah, it gives me the warm and fuzzies, you know, when I can like help my clients like fulfill their own goals and achievements in their their work. So um, it's kind of like an onflow effect. It's the way I can help other people achieve their goals through their business or through their side hustle, whatever it may be. Well, just yeah, I think from me, like I've obviously owned businesses as well, but just seeing someone like yourself who's actually come from a creative background. And mm. not sitting in another job that you're, you know, doing something you just have to do to earn an income and wishing you could have been the creative and all those things that you probably had in your personal life. But you've actually brought that through to be this is how you serve the world is to actually mm. you know, put beautiful things onto people's websites and, you know, the way you create. So that's a pretty amazing experience for you know, someone like already that you're only really fresh into your business, aren't you? This is, is this the second year or? Yeah. So uh, I, I started off under my own name, with Katie Wass Designs, but I then rebranded under Rise and Raw Design probably about um, eight months ago. So it's probably yeah. been about two or three years altogether, but yeah. yeah, it's still quite fresh with this new business. 
God, there's some opportunities <laughs> for you, isn't there? Where you can take it to. Yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so as we do each week, I'd just like for you to maybe just share with us what your favourite quote is. So my favourite quote is, everything happens for a reason. Um, and just quickly, I, I fight with this quote a little bit sometimes because I don't believe everything is set in stone and like planned out for you. But I also think that, you know, there's something out there that's kind of helping you along. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. so I feel like things do happen for a reason and you can make the most out of them, you know, what you want to. So, mm. yeah, I have, I have conflicting thoughts about it, but I think that's why I love it so much because it's, it challenges me. Yeah. Because I mean, I think if there's things in life too, that everything that's sent that does, it challenges us, but you so far have survived all of the things, haven't you? Yeah, exactly. It's been put before you. I mean, sorry, I'm not touch wood for COVID nineteen, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but even <Fingers> crossed. <laughs> but even in the lessons recently, you know, like that quote would apply, wouldn't it? You know, to, to your life. Yeah, yeah, and it's gotten me to where I am right now, and I'm I'm loving where I am right now. So mm. Um, mm. yeah, I really do love that quote. That's good. Oh, yeah, I think I was just going to, sorry, I just can see um, Katie on the screen and I know where Katie is right now. So that doesn't really make me giggle, but <laughs> <laughs> she's sitting in a very quiet room <laughs> so that we can get the, the volume right. <laughs> um, what's your favourite song? So <laughs> this goes back to high school. Um, it really struck a chord for me because I was bullied in school and it really helped me to to get through it, I guess. Um, and it's Shake It Off by Taylor Swift. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I know. I am a, I'm a little bit of a fan of Taylor um, just because of what she stands for and how much she's been through in her career as well. But, yeah, Shake It Off is just a fantastic song that you can just, like, go a little bit crazy with it. If you're feeling oh. really um, bad, you can just put it on and just, yeah, shake it off. <laughs> uh, maybe we could all be shaking some stuff off this week. Might be a good idea. So I might go and try that on Spotify later. But um, you should. Good. Yeah, not really. I don't really follow Taylor Swift, so there's a difference in our age group. <laughs> Fair enough. Not a lot of people love her. Okay. Uh, well, that's it for us today. I really just want to thank you for just sharing. Thirty minutes. Thirty minutes goes so quick. So you know, there's so a lot quick. More yeah. We could have talked about, but um, yeah, as we go on, as I said. Everyone knows that this is my first go at putting podcasts together. So I may stumble and fumble and, um, you know, I'm trying not to say my ums and ahs too much, but my goal is to get <laughs> to have a, a podcast every week. And when I get to my goal of 40 podcasts, uh, all the people mm -hmm. that were my first 10, I would like to actually have everyone back again and we'll go to that next Amazing. Week. Yeah. And talk about. Yeah. Something. Cool. Yeah. So. Yeah. And you've got to start somewhere. So that's amazing. Hey, we'll get there. So, uh, so this will go up live and um, yeah, I hope everyone enjoys listening to Katie's story. Uh, everyone's got a, a story to tell. So uh, thank you so much for contributing yours today. No problem. Thanks so much for having me. No problem. Okay. See you soon. Bye.